Hey everybody, Chris Lodi here and welcome back to the studio. Um, I thought it was about time I started covering some XFM FM synthesis tutorials. So that is the part of the XFM where we put on the overlay and we can edit the core FM sounds within the unit. And these are four operator FM sounds. So we need to talk a little bit about what operators are and how they work. So we've got our four operators here. Internally, they're just smooth sine waves. They also contain a pitch control each and also an envelope for their volume. So let's draw those in. So we've got a, a pitch control and an envelope. So the envelope is actually an eight stage envelope. I've just drawn a simple ADSR here just to represent it. So the way that FM works is we start off with a sine wave. It's the cleanest and purest uh, waveform that you can produce. It produce, produces one harmonic. Anything we feed into that is going to make it more harmonically rich which changes its tone. There's lots of different names for this. We could describe it as brightness or its complexity or the amount of energy that it produces or the wave shape. It's all to do with changing the tone of that sine wave, making it more complex makes it sound more aggressive or brighter. The closer we move back to that sine wave, the more pure it sounds again. So the way that most hardware FM synths are set up is that we have to choose a predetermined algorithm to begin with. That is a, a predetermined set of routings that can connect these operators together and to the output. So typically, like in a two-op uh, FM synth, you'd have one that would have a feedback. You'd have an operator connected to the output. And then this first operator would be connected to the second one. And the, all of these are things we can determine the level of. So we can determine the internal level. So this is going to, as we put, add more feedback, that is going to turn that from a sine wave into a saw wave, which is a bright waveform. And then the more of that that's fed into the sine wave in operator two, the brighter that will become. So on a four op FM synth, you might have an algorithm that looks a bit like this. You've got one that allows feedback fed into another one, and then two that are a pair that don't have feedback. This means that we have to choose our algorithm to begin with before we start making our sounds, but that isn't the case on the XFM. We have free reign to create whatever routing we want. So as well as feedback on operator one, we've got it on two, three, and four. So I'll just draw those in. Additionally, we also have negative feedback, which means not only can we create a sine wave that turns into a saw, we can turn it into a square as well. So let's draw a negative in. and we can connect whichever operator to whichever operator we want. So operator one can send into three and four, two into one, three and four, etc. So I'll just draw those in. So we've got much more flexibility when it comes to the routing that we can set up. We can just set up the amounts of each of these that we want, but these connections are basically already there. And then we also have the ability to send how much of each operator we want to the output. So I'll draw those in as well. So that's basically what's going on with the routing inside the XFM. We've got an enormous amount of choice here that this is great for sound design. We also have, also have a pitch envelope. Now this is the amount of this is determined internally and we can choose uh, which of the operators it's sent to just by an on off switch. So we've essentially got like four little switches that we can turn on and off to set each of these to respond to the pitch envelope. So that's the XFM's uh, engine explained. It's most, most complex, but to begin with, we should start by just looking at two operators. So that's what we're gonna do for our demo sound. One thing I forgot to mention before I completely scrubbed that diagram off the board was the fact that the this freedom of routing allows us to have feedback paths within our routing which is also something that's not quite so common. So we can create rings of feedback that go between operators and create some really interesting sounds. That's something I'll probably cover uh, in more detail in the future. So to demonstrate a quick two up sound, we need to enter edit mode. Um, I am going to go through this tutorial with accessibility in mind. So we were referring to the keys by number, the step buttons by number and the rubber buttons by number and also the knobs by number as we go through. So if we hold function, which is button two, and press key two, which it says edit underneath, we're gonna be asked to pick a bank and sound to edit. So I've got a bank 30 is pretty much clear. So if we press a 
key, we're going to hear a pure sine tone. So press OK, which is button 11. That takes us into edit mode. At this point, we need to put our overlay on. So we're presented with this clean sine wave uh, sound, which is just this. We've got operator 1 fed to the output. That is the only uh, thing that is set up on a blank patch on the XFN. Then we're going to feed operator 2 into operator 1, and that operator 1 is going to stay uh, going to the output. So let's just draw operator 2 in. So one of the quirks of the interface of the XFM is the fact that it talks about receive levels. This is the same as a send. Essentially, we're going to create a, a, a connection between these two from our operator 1 to operator 2. But on the XFM, it's called a receive. So we're receiving operator 2 from operator 1. So we've got operator 1 selected here on the operator select uh, switches. And we need to select a receive level from operator 2. So if we press step 2, and then we turn up our value knob, which is knob 10, from the bottom, we'll start to increase this. So what we're doing here is changing this amount. What we're going to do now is we're going to change the feedback level on operator 2. So we're going to add in this connection. Like that. So this is essentially a receive level from operator 2 to operator 2. So we're getting this feedback. So if you press operator 2 button here, which is button number 4 on the rubber buttons, and then turn that level up. Actually, let's turn that level down. Let's take it, make it into a square wave. As you can hear, that is making a different sound because we're changing this operator's setup. So instead of a, this one's being a sign, this is more like a square wave. It's probably not exactly a square wave, but it's, uh, you know, for the purposes of this, let's call it a square. So we're not actually changing anything that's being fed to the output. We're changing the operator that is feeding the operator that is set to the output when we change this. So now let's create an envelope for this operator too. What this is going to do is make it start at a high level, and then over time, its volume will decay. And what that's going to do, that's going to change this sound as this plays. So if we select uh, the sustain level, which is on page one, so we've got, we've got um, button one pressed sustain level, which is uh, step 11, we turn that all the way down. It's gonna get this little click, because at the moment it's shooting to the top and all the way down to the bottom instantly. So then we need to change the sustain time. So page two, which is button two, that's still on step 11, so that's set to zero. So let's turn that up to about 50 or something. Now let's go a bit more. Let's go 75-ish. So as you can hear, as this decays, this changes this operator by this operator as the volume of this decreases. At the moment, we haven't set up an envelope for operator one, so we've just got this square. But let's just add a little bit of a release on to the end. Um, where if we go back to operator one, which is button three, and then we want release time. So we're in page two, which is button number two, step number 12, we turn that up a bit. So let's give it about, about the same, let's go 70, no. Let's turn it up to about 50, so we've got just a short release. As you can hear at the moment, that uh, release tail isn't being modulated, so we need to add the same in to operator two. So if we go back to operator two, just button four, turn up our release time a little bit to 50-ish. It's important to note that not only is the, the shape of the operator feeding into another operator change its tone over time, but also the pitch will. So if we then go, we're still in operator two, so we've got uh, button four pressed, we can change the pitch of operator two. So if we press the ratio frequency button, which is step five, and go back to page one, which is button number one, we can see we're set to one, and so is operator one. So if we change the pitch of operator two, then that modulation is going to be different. But as you can hear, I've just turned that down. As operator two fades away completely, operator one becomes more dominant. So we go from a low sound to a high sound. Whereas if you turn up,
operator two's ratio, we're gonna go from a high sound down to a lower sound, which is this operator. So if we drop that in pitch by pressing button number eight a few times, we've got quite a decent bass sound there. So that's basically how FM synthesis works. We've got um, a pure sine wave here. We could change that if we wanted to, but we're feeling it with something more aggressive that decays over time. So the tone of this operator will change over time as this one decays. And the relationship between the pitch and the wave shape of whichever uh, operator is modulating another one will also determine how the tone changes over time. So it's literally just a case of experimenting with different ratios and different waveforms and different um, settings and seeing how that affects your sound. So this will be one of a few different sound design videos I make for the XFM. This is just a basic one to get you going. Uh, if there's anything you specifically want to ask for in the comments, I will try and accommodate you. So I really hope you found this useful. Uh, yeah, so uh, give us a like and please subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Uh, thanks very much and I'll see you again in the future. Cheers.